speed and range of a fixed-wing aircraft and the operational flexibility of a helicopter. That's the promise of the long-awaited AW609 tilt rotor, and Augusta Westland says it's now barely three years away from making the first deliveries. Augusta Westland test pilots flew the 609 in from Dallas, where the program is based for now, ahead of a planned move to Philadelphia, where the production line will be located. They told AINTV about the difference a tilt rotor can make to an operator and what it's like to fly it. I've been flying this aircraft for about three and a half years and it is a lot of fun. The advantage of a tilt rotor over a business airplane or a helicopter is the fact that we can do the entire mission of each of those aircraft. So, for instance, to come to this trade show, we actually left out of Dallas, we picked the aircraft, we climbed up to 23,000 feet, we flew at 250 knots true airspeed, and then we landed to a hover here at the convention center. We didn't have to use a runway, and yet we made it here in just a little bit more time than an airliner would have made it here. We can get out to the offshore oil well at twice the speed of a helicopter. We can go out much farther, so now with the deep water rigs getting farther and farther offshore, we can make it there without refueling. We can make it there over the weather. If there's bad weather, we'll just go on top of it and we can make it there efficiently because we're taking advantage of the high altitude. And we can still come to a hover and land on the helipad on the oil rig. Or if you look at, for instance, a hospital, we could fly organs from an organ donor at one hospital, leave the helipad and fly to another helipad on another hospital where the, where the recipient would be. No need to, to put them in an airplane and fly them because we're going to fly just as high and just as fast as that airplane would have anyway, but we're going to completely eliminate the trip from the hospital to the airport and from the airport to the other hospital. Basically our control system is very helicopter-like. So in the critical modes of flight where you're taking off and landing, we are just a helicopter and our, hel and our flight controls act like a helicopter. However, on the left-hand collective grip, we have a nacelle controller and it's controlled by your thumb and you push it forward, nacelles go forward, rotated aft, nacelles come aft. And what you find is that in the lower speed ranges, the nacelle controller becomes your speed controller. So instead of pitching up like you would on a helicopter, you just rotate the nacelles aft and you'll slow down. And we tend to fly with a very level pitch attitude and we use the nacelles to slow us down. Or on takeoff, we use the nacelles to begin the takeoff. So we're at a hover. We just rotate the nacelles forward to 75 degrees and away we go. And it climbs out very quickly because we get through effective translational lift so fast. When you're first taking off, your, your lift is being created by the rotors, not by the wing. And the wing is not going to become effective until you reach about 100 knots or so. So you can't rotate the nacelles as fast as you possibly could. You have to rotate them at a certain speed. And what we've done for that is we have preset nacelle angles. So when you hold the, the nacelle controller forward, the nacelles go to 75, and you're going to build up speed rapidly, and you're eventually going to get wing-borne lift but it won't go past 75. And if they did, you could feasibly lose altitude or even, it, it, would, it wouldn't be safe. So it's very, very safe to have this 75 degree stop that we have on the, on the aircraft. Beyond this, engineers have also taken steps to protect against the danger of one engine failing. We have a drive shaft that connects our two rotor systems. So if one engine were to fail, both rotor systems continue to operate completely as normal. And then our engines, we have electronic control on our engines, computer control, of course. So if one engine fails, the other engine automatically resets its limits to allow us to go into 30 second power. And that vastly increases the power of that one engine. And therefore, we can actually lose an engine at a hover and at a, at a a lower gross weight, just slightly lower than our max gross weight, we would continue to hover. Even at our max gross weight, we would actually just land very softly. So, but there's nothing dramatic about having an engine failure. At this year's Heli Expo show, the Italian manufacturer signed a key partnership with the Bristol Group, which will cooperate with the remaining development program for the 609 as a prelude to an anticipated order for the aircraft.